Spelling seems to be a struggle sometimes and this might be because pupils tend to associate spelling with copying out their words and having to learn them through memorising. I'm going to give you a little bit of a whistle stop tour of how I teach spelling in my classroom and how I engage my pupils through fun active spelling activities. We could clap out the number of syllables in that word. Helicopter. I could not recommend that resource more. Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jane, otherwise known as Miss Ross, and I am a Scottish primary teacher. I really enjoy teaching spelling, but something I've noticed is that a lot of my pupils don't enjoy doing spelling in class. Spelling seems to be a struggle sometimes, and this might be because pupils tend to associate spelling with copying out their words and having to learn them through memorising. When I was at school myself, I remember really enjoying spelling, but I think that's because it was never really an area where I struggled. I'm just one of those people that I can look at a new word and pretty much retain it instantly. I actually entered a spelling competition when I was in secondary school and to this day I will never forget the word that missed me out on going to the next level of the competition. It was the word manoeuvre. Best believe that I now know how to spell that word and I'll never forget how to spell that word. But anyway, on to the point of today's video, which is there are so many different ways to teach spelling. I'm always trying to find new ways to motivate my learners to investigate the spellings of different words. I do want to try and make spelling an enjoyable process for all of my learners and take into account all of their different learning styles. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a little bit of a whistle stop to Tour of how I teach spelling in my classroom and how I engage my pupils through fun active spelling activities. I will post all of the timestamps for this video in the description so that you can jump around between some of the different activities and I'll also try and include some of the resources that I use as well. I'm just going to start off by talking you through some of the spelling strategies that we encourage our pupils to use in the classroom. In quite a lot of the schools that I've worked in we use active literacy approaches. From week to week pupils are usually focusing on a specific sound or phoneme. This could also be a spelling rule, common words or words that are related to the topic that they're learning about in class. Each week pupils are provided with a specific list of words and there are different strategies which we use to help us to spell those words. Different spelling strategies are going to work for different types of words so usually I would work together with my class at the board to discover what strategies are going to work best for the words that we have that week. This will usually begin with me reading the word for the pupils and asking them if they know what that word means or what it's referring to. Pupils love having a chat about things that they already know and having a go at using the word in a sentence and then it's time for us to have that discussion about what strategy we're going to use to be able to spell that word. Firstly I would usually encourage my pupils to identify the sounds or phonemes that are in a word. This could be done using Elkanen boxes. Using these boxes involves pupils listening to a word and thinking about the different sounds that make up that word and recording them using the box format. A way that I like to break this down nicely for my pupils is by encouraging them to think about what the first sound they hear in the word is and then the very last sound and it can be a little bit trickier but then encouraging them to think about what the sound in the middle is. Something that is important to note about the Elkanen boxes is that they don't work for every single word. A strategy that I've commonly seen used in schools is the use of diacritical marking which does sound a little bit intimidating at first but it is a lot simpler than it sounds. Diacritical marking encourages pupils to identify single, joined and split phonemes that make up a word. Again, depending on the age of your pupils, they may be able to identify these independently or you may want to do it as a class up on the board. Another strategy that I tend to use when I'm teaching spelling is syllabification. I hate saying that word. Syllabif syllabification. All words can be broken down into syllables which makes it a lot easier to spell the words. But it's also important not to get muddled between syllables and phonemes because syllables don't necessarily relate to the number of sounds that are in a word. A strategy that I like to use with my pupils is counting out the syllables by clapping our hands or you can also put your hand underneath your chin. I've seen this one used a lot and when you say the word every time that your chin goes down and taps your hand that is the number of syllables that are in that word. So for example the word helicopter. We could clap out the number of syllables in that word. Hel 
or you can put your hand underneath your chin. Helicopter. And that really helps pupils to break down their words into easier chunks. The next spelling strategy that we quite commonly teach is the use of spelling rules. So sometimes words will follow a particular pattern or rule which will help us to learn how to spell them. Quite often when I'm introducing a new set of words, I will write the word on the board for the pupils and ask them to identify what might make that word tricky, what do they notice about the words, and where do they think that we might go wrong with the spelling of that word. Things like identifying silent letters in a word or double consonants are quite common spelling rules. I always remember that when I was in school I learned I before E except after C, but I now know as a teacher that that's actually really quite an inconsistent rule and probably not the best one to learn. But there are lots of words where spelling rules apply eh, and that can be a really helpful way for pupils to learn how to spell different words. Another strategy which we often use in our classroom is looking for compound words, which are words made up of smaller words combined. Things like football, which is obviously made up of foot and ball put together. Pupils can underline each word in a different colour or draw a little squiggly line down the middle. And another similar strategy that we quite often use is looking for words within words. If we are looking at a longer, more challenging word like vegetable, then it's about picking out smaller words that we do know how to spell, maybe like the word table, and that will help us to chunk up the word and be able to spell it. When we were younger, my little sister really struggled with her literacy because she's actually dyslexic and I always remember that my mum did a lot of work with her at home on her spelling words and they came up with lots of mnemonics to help them to spell words and that's a strategy that I quite often use in my classroom as well, especially for those trickier words. Coming up with a mnemonic, like a little acrostic poem or a rhyme, can also really help pupils, especially for those words that they just really struggle to get. Anyway, that kind of sums up how I would teach new vocabulary to pupils um, up at the board or with small groups. It's important to provide pupils with lots of opportunities to explore those words over the course of the week and to try and apply their learning. So now I'm just going to talk you through how I run spelling in my classroom, how I kind of organise it and make time for it during the day, and then I will go on to explain some of the active spelling activities that I like to do. Again, it's really important to point out that you know your learners best and you know what types of activities are going to work for them. It might be easier for you if you have enough resources to do one active spelling activity a day and that keeps it nice and easy for the whole class, especially if you have learners who are not very independent and then you can very much model the activity and all pupils know the expectation and they're all doing the same thing. Alternatively, you could split activities between the different spelling groups in your class and you could work on a kind of rotational basis over the course of the week so that all pupils have the opportunity to experience spelling using a range of different strategies. Also, if you are doing some of the active spelling activities that I'm going to mention slightly later on um, and you just don't have enough resources for the whole class to share, it can work a lot better if you split into smaller groups. Something that I completely forgot to mention was that usually I only spend about 15-20 minutes each day doing active spelling. I find it much more effective to give pupils that regular practice each day for short bursts of time rather than just having one main spelling lesson a week and it also just gets them into the way of practicing their words every day. Some good times to plan active spelling are first thing in the morning when pupils arrive into the classroom because I find that you can lay out all of your resources and have them waiting and pupils know the expectation that when they come in they take out their words and start practicing for those first 15 minutes of the day or after lunchtime as well is a really good time after a transition and pupils can get into a good routine and they know that that's the time that they practice their spelling words. In some of the schools I've worked in, it's been quite common to use active spelling menus to encourage pupils to engage with their spelling words. I've seen a lot of teachers use these choice grids for homework and pupils can choose the strategy at home that they would like to use to practice their spelling words. Um, but in class, this can be a bit trickier because it's quite difficult to manage if you have a group of 30 pupils all choosing a different strategy um, depending on you know the resources and things that they need. Sometimes I do like to use active spelling as a little fast finisher activity and pupils can go and choose a task. I used to have a display up on my wall in my old classroom with little twinkle cards for different active spelling strategies that I found, which again I will link down below. Things like fancy writing, pyramid writing, rainbow writing are quite common ones and they're also quite easy to resource as well. Pupils can usually um, just manage to do those ones in their jotters with limited resources needed um, as long as they've got that list of their spelling words. But one of the best active spelling grids that I found 
is one that I will again link below. I'll put it up on the screen just now. I just think this one is absolutely amazing because it takes into account lots of different learning styles from visual learners to people that work in a more logical way and enjoy working with maths. And it's also split into the different Blooms levels, which is just amazing. There are so many fab ideas on there that I have pinched. It might be quite a lot just to give your pupils this grid and tell them to choose something, but it definitely helps with inspiration for ways to make spelling fun. So I could not recommend that resource more. I have had a lot of success using a task board to help manage different stations in my classroom. I feel like I do talk about this in a lot of my videos, but I got this idea from Mrs. Mac Makes on Instagram. She is also a Scottish primary teacher and I absolutely love her ideas. So I'll link her page down below. Definitely go and give her a follow. Um, she is to blame for all of the task board madness that I use in my classroom. But this just really helps to organize my classroom and make sure that pupils know exactly what task it is that they are doing. Obviously it does involve a little bit of training. Uh, pupils need to know what each of the different activities mean and what it is they're expected to do and where they can access the resources that they need in order to do that activity. But I would definitely recommend experimenting with a task board especially for whole class lessons when you have different ability groups in your class. Okay so now we're on to the bit that I'm sure most of you have been waiting for which is my favourite active spelling activities to do in the classroom. I've tried to kind of categorise them into groups so that it's a bit more easy to understand without me just listing through hundreds of different activities. So the next few activities I'm going to talk you through are all quite hands-on that involve making something, doing something. For those learners that really learn through touching things and through fiddling with things and doing things. A classic example of this is using Play-Doh to make your spelling words. Really good for those fine motor skills. Play-Doh is always a huge hit no matter what the age group of the pupils that you're working with. They love to get their hands dirty and to get a bit messy and to make things using their hands. Another one that I use quite often in my classroom, especially on a nice sunny day, is encouraging pupils to go outside and write their words on the ground. They could do it with chalk. We've also done it with water, just dipping paintbrushes in water and having a go at writing them on the ground. Something that I'm seeing more and more often now on teaching Instagram is encouraging pupils to write on tables using erasable whiteboard markers. For some reason, pupils just love writing on tables and giving them permission to do that can be really motivating for them sometimes. I have had some pupils writing their spelling words over every single inch of the table, but if that motivates them to engage with their words, then I don't see why not. It can be cleaned off at the end of the day and it's just something a little bit different for them. Similarly, if you have a big glass window or a door, as long as you're willing to give it a good clean afterwards, then this can be really motivating for pupils. Other strategies that I really like are cutting out your spelling words from like magazines, finding different letters and piecing them together in a sort of collage. A lot of the schools I've worked in have had magnetic letter boards. This is quite often if you are working in a school that use active literacy. There are magnetic versions of all of the different phonemes that you can use um, and pupils love trying to make their words using the magnetic letters. Similarly, I've seen teachers using Scrabble tiles to spell out their spelling words. I also bought little letter beads which pupils could thread onto a string, which they always really enjoy doing. Using little stampers to stamp out their spelling words filling trays with glitter or sand or shaving foam, any type of material that pupils can poke their finger in and have a go at writing out their sounds or their words. Something that I recently invested in, which has been a huge hit with my pupils, is poppets. Obviously the fidget toy craze has been so popular with a lot of my pupils. They can pop all of the different letters in their words. This is just a rainbow keyboard that I bought from Shein. I've also seen people do it just with a classic poppet and they've used a sharpie to write the different letters and sounds on. There are so many different ways that you you can use poppets in the classroom so I would definitely recommend going and checking these out. Using objects to spell out your words, I've seen this done with Lego bricks and again you could encourage pupils to get outside, collect stones and leaves and sticks and spell out their words on the ground. Another one that my pupils really enjoyed was learning to spell their words using sign language. For one lesson I actually taught my pupils how to make little fortune tellers using origami and each time they opened and closed the fortune teller they had to spell out their words making scratch art and pupils can scratch in their spelling words onto a piece of paper. The next kind of category of active spelling activities is group activities and games that I like to play with my class. So the first one is a really simple one and that is just basic split 
splitting the class into partners and letting them test each other on their spelling words. If they have a personal whiteboard, then they can write the words down and they can play being the teacher, which quite a lot of my classes have enjoyed and it's a nice, quick and easy one to organise. Pupils always enjoy simple games like Hangman. I don't really like using Hangman itself, but we have adapted a version of Hangman, which involves drawing a spider from a web instead, encouraging pupils to make their own crosswords and word searches and then swapping them over and trying to complete them is always a really effective, simple activity. I also bought a set of fly swatters from Amazon. Amazon is your best friend when it comes to active spelling materials and pupils really enjoy playing games where they have a mat with all of their spelling words spaced out on them and the first pupil to find the word and slap it with their fly swatter gets a point. Really simple but effective and they have so much fun swatting these things. Just as long as you make sure to remind them that they are not to be used for hitting each other. This was another Shein buy. Who knew there were so many different ways of using fidget spinners in the classroom? There are a lot of different active spelling games which you can find online that pupils can play using a fidget spinner. There are so many different versions of spelling board games that you can find online as well. I'll just quickly talk you through a few of my favourite printable spelling board games. I absolutely love this spelling buried treasure game. It's a little bit like battleships if you've ever played that and pupils need to plot their spelling words on the grid and try and find each other's words. I also love a good dice game. It's super simple but active for your pupils. I like this one because depending on what number you land on there's a different activity to complete using your spelling words. Pupils in my class have also enjoyed having a spelling word race and predicting which word they think is going to finish the race first. When you roll that number then you write the word in one of the boxes and the first word to have the most boxes full is the winner. You can also play this in partners as well and pupils can compete to see who can fill the boxes the first for a word. Playing heads up is also a really great way for pupils to learn their vocabulary words. The other player or players have to give clues about the word that the player is holding and they have to try and guess what the word is. This one can get a little bit competitive and noisy but my pupils absolutely love it. This is also a really great way to consolidate words from previous weeks as well. Kaboom is another great game that can be applied to most areas of the curriculum and in spelling I like to write the different spelling words on lollipop sticks and there are of course some hidden kaboom sticks as well. Pupils take it in turns to pull out a stick and spell the word. If they manage to spell it correctly they get to keep a stick but if they pull out a kaboom then they lose all of their points. This is another one that Mrs Mac influenced me to buy from Shein and it is a poppet board game so it does have the little poppet circles and pupils can use this to keep their score um, again, there are a lot of different resources online that are pre-made that you can use and adapt for your classroom and it actually came with a little set of dice as well. So there are lots of ways that this can be adapted for the classroom and I love when you can buy reusable resources like this that could be applied to every area of the curriculum. So things like this I am all for. Next up, I'm moving on to some more arty kind of spelling activities that require very little resources and this one is a staple in my classroom. I love encouraging pupils to get creative with the way that they write out their spelling words on the graffiti wall. Making a spelling scribble is another way to encourage your pupils to learn their words and it's a bit more interesting than just copying them out in their jotter and my pupils really enjoy seeing the different shapes that they manage to make and the final product looks really cool and colourful. I've been seeing this idea doing the rounds on Instagram and I really love it. Pupils are able to use their spelling words to create loads of different designs and you can do this really simply using tracing paper. Also, if you manage to print out designs that may be of interest to your pupils, then this might be a big motivator in getting them to practice their spelling words. These are just some of my favourite active spelling activities. I honestly feel like I could go on all day, but hopefully they have given you lots of ideas and inspiration. Please feel free to comment down below what your favourite one was, if there's one that you're going to try, or if there's any you feel I've not mentioned. As teachers, it's always good to share good practice, so I would love to hear from you all about your experiences of teaching spelling. Just a little reminder that I am a full-time teacher that likes to make YouTube videos in my free time. So if you did find this helpful, it would really help to support my channel if you give this video a thumbs up. For more teaching related content, please subscribe to my channel. It would mean the absolute world. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all in my next one. Bye.